Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan, but before we begin, a word from our sponsors. Oh, hi there. I didn't see you guys coming, but now that you're here, let's talk. Did you know since the destruction of Alderaan, thousands of children have been orphaned? Like this birdbath, their dreams, hopes, and parents are now dead. We here at the Alderanian Reclamation Program have been working hard to recover what we can from the ruins. Now for just a small donation of 20 credits, you can provide an Alderanian orphan with a spirit box, inside which is a generous portion of space dust from the remains of the planet. Now, it might not tell them bedtime stories or pay for their education, but it'll make them feel like they're holding their parents once again. All the Ration Reclamation Program is legally obligated to inform you that there's a 99.99998 chance that oh it's inside the box will not match the It's inside parents. of me! The All the Iranian Reclamation Program is not a registered nonprofit charity organization. Donations are not tax deductible. Check with your local authorities before donating to the All the Iranian Reclamation Program as they are considered pirates in certain systems. The All the Iranian Reclamation Program is a subsidiary of the Black Suns LLC. With advertisers blockading YouTube like the Trade Federation was blockading Naboo, we're depending on great sponsors like the Black Suns and of course our Patreon supporters to help continue running the show. So if you have a moment, please check out our Patreon if you can help out. Anyway, last episode using science, math, magic, the force, and the power of love, we were able to figure out that one galactic credit is worth around 1 to 1.5 US dollars. Today we're going to apply that knowledge to the Rebel Alliance's motley crew of starfighters and see if we can actually afford any of them. So let's do this alphabetically and start with the A-Wing Interceptor. This sleek beauty was a product of Quad Systems Engineering. It was essentially a pilot strapped onto two powerful sublight engines. The A-Wing, like its predecessor, the ETA-2 Actus Interceptor, had an incredible top speed along with an extremely sensitive set of controls. It was said that only a Force user could take full advantage of this speedy little ship's capabilities. Unlike its Imperial counterpart, the A-Wing had shields and a hyperdrive, which made it relatively expensive at $175,000 to $262,500 US dollars. That's in the price range of a 2016 Aston Martin DB9. But actually, compared to modern fighters, it's ridiculously cheap. The F-35 costs around $100 million per unit and $32,000 per flight hour. So in just around half a dozen missions, the F-35's operation costs alone will be more than the A-Wing itself. Why is that? Well, it could be that Star Wars technology is so much more advanced than ours that it cuts down costs dramatically in R&D, manufacturing, and labor. But also companies in Star Wars produced a lot more vehicles than our Earth counterparts. The US military has the largest air force in the world and fuels just over 2,000 fighter jets. In comparison, each one of the 25,000 Imperial Star Destroyers in the Emperor's fleet carries 72 starfighters. That means just on ISDs alone, there are 1.8 million starfighters. That's a number closer to the 1 million Corolla Toyotas manufactured last year. The thing is, the more you sell, the more your price per unit goes down. One-time initial costs like R&D are recuperated as you move more inventory. Also, you can purchase more raw materials in bulk, saving production costs, along with investing in a more efficient manufacturing setup. Now, I'm not saying that an F-35 would ever be cheaper than a Corolla, but what I'm saying is that if you produced millions of them, you could probably lower your cost per unit dramatically. Next up is the B-Wing, or Blade Wing. It was relatively slow and awkward to fly because of its unique gyroscope cockpit attachment, but it more than made up for it in firepower. It was primarily used as an assault ship and was extremely useful at taking out capital ships. A single B-Wing cost around $220,000 to $330,000. Next up is the famous Incom X-Wing. We'll be talking about the iconic T-65B model. It was good for all sorts of missions from interception and escort to bombing and ground support. The perfect starfighter for a fleet lacking large capital ships. But being a jack of all trades meant it didn't necessarily excel at anything. Now if you took out a few keywords from our last paragraph like starfighter, you'd think I was talking about the controversial F-35 program. But unlike the F-35 program, the X-Wing cost a reasonable $150,000 to $225,000. The F-35, as we stated before, costs around $100 million per unit, but as more units are made, that number is estimated to continue going down and reach $85 million per unit by 2019. But that could still buy you like 400 X-Wings, which is crazy, right? So why is this happening? 
Well, in Legends, Incom was in the middle of being nationalized by the Empire, and several senior designers and engineers decided to leave the company, and they secretly gave schematics of a new prototype starfighter to the Rebel Alliance. That, of course, would turn out to be the X-Wing. Essentially, the Rebels paid zero credits for any R&D. The F-35 program, which is estimated to cost around $1.5 trillion in its lifetime, is heavily weighed down by initial R&D costs. Before there was even an F-35, the DOD funded a Joint Strike Fighter contest. This included the forgotten Boeing X-32. This concept demonstration phase alone cost $2 billion. The X-Wing was made out of desperation and necessity, much like the Warbirds of World War II. The Spitfighter Mk-1, which held the line at the Battle of Britain, cost only 12,000 pounds, or just under a million dollars in today's money. If you know your ABCs, then following an X-Wing is usually a Y-Wing closing in for the kill. Many of the Rebels' Y-Wings were actually stolen from Imperial scrapyards. The version that the Rebels ran with had much of its exterior paneling and components, including the turret gun, removed. This gave the Y-Wing better performance cooling and also allowed mechanics easier access to repair its components. The Y-Wings we see in the original trilogy were mostly manufactured and purchased during the Republic era. That was before the economic turmoil caused by the Clone Wars and the rise of the Empire, which affected the value of the Galactic Credit. Therefore, its cost is probably closer to the higher end of our estimate of $140,000 to $210,000 per unit. But of course, because most of these ships were stolen, that means the only thing you really have to worry about is maintenance and operation costs. Which comes to my next point for all of you wannabe starfighter pilots. Before you purchase your dream starfighter, keep in mind how much it's actually going to cost for you to operate one of these vehicles. It's not cheap, and if you live in a large city, you're going to have to pay docking fees. And be sure to check with your local government about emissions laws and piloting regulations. There's a chance that in your region, it might not even be legal to own a starfighter. Now, unless you're a savant, you're also going to need an astromech to store hyperspace routes. An R2 unit costs around four to six grand, and these are the droids you're looking for. The last thing you're going to want to do is jump accidentally through a black hole. Unless you're Matthew McConaughey. And if you are Matthew McConaughey, are you willing to accept the consequences of seeing everyone around you grow old without you? The point is, like everything in life, there are hidden costs, which brings us to today's investing tip. Playing the interstellar stock exchange like it's a game sabak is the quickest way to find yourself half-naked chained to a hut. For all you high-frequency traders out there, don't forget, every time you cash out, you're paying that broker's fee, and it's cutting into your gains. As the famous Mune investor Higo Damas once said, only a fool focuses on the short game. A master is much more farsighted. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button so you don't miss out on all of our new videos and interstellar trading tips. And a special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters. Without you, we wouldn't be able to afford to make these videos, let alone think about buying an X-Wing. As usual guys, thanks for joining us. If you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.